So what matters if I want to become a professor? I want to elaborate a bit on which measures you need to take in order to be appointable as a professor. And I want to start with the process of being appointed and the selection criteria that the committees typically use in order to select people and to appoint them as a professor. So I'm talking here about the first appointment as a professor, um, considering the German academic system. So this is often a W2 professor position, so an associate professor position. Um, but the requirements that I will elaborate are probably very similar to a 10-year evaluation after an assistant professor um, position. Um, if you go to a full professor position, um, you would need to raise the bar a little bit higher. So how does it work? Typically we have a um, public call um, then different people apply. You will also apply, send in your CV and then there will be a selection committee that will shortlist those um, people that we have uh, that applied to maybe something like six to eight candidates. They will invite the candidates. The candidates have to give a talk, maybe give a lecture um, and then to up to a commission. And based on this, the commission will reduce the number of suitable candidates to something like three and then will proceed with that list getting in external reviews. So the question is, how is this narrowing down done? The first thing, what do you need to do to get invited? And the second thing is, what do you need to offer so that you stay within this, let's say, top three people? And for that, the selection committee typically defines a set of criteria. They are defined before the applications um, are scanned and um, in order to not bias it towards one specific application. And typically we have three criteria that are relevant. Maybe that can differ a little bit, but most of the committees that I have seen have these three criteria. The first criteria is the quality of your research profile. So something which is very strongly related to your past merits. So what have you achieved research-wise in the past? The second um, criteria is the fit to the position or the call. So in the call, there are certain things listed that the university wants to see. And the question is, how good do you fit to that profile? And the third criteria is typically your ability to teach and educate the next generation of researchers. Um, so those criteria are now relatively vague. Um, and the question is, can we narrow them down? Can we make them more concrete? And this is the goal of this video. And what I want to do, I want to provide you with some very concrete numbers that I think you need to provide so that people think you're appointable. That doesn't mean you will get the professor position. If someone is better than you are, the other person is very likely to be higher ranked than you. But what is kind of the minimum requirement so that people don't discuss in those committees if someone is in general appointable, yes or no. Let's start with the research profile. Um, here two things matter. First one are high quality publications and second one your ability to attract external funding. So publications and funding are the currency here. So what does it mean? Um, if you are currently a postdoc for example and you are doing research, you're writing papers, um, selection committees want to see a certain number of papers with you as the first or the last authors. Roughly, we can say two papers per year as first or last authors in solid journals um, is something that is well seen, plus maybe one or two publications where you're not necessarily the first author. Um, journals or conferences is something which is often debated, especially in technical disciplines such as computer science. Um, in most disciplines, only journals will count. Um, in other disciplines, like computer science, conferences also have a very high standing. The problem, however, is that in those selection committees are often people from different disciplines and they may argue against your application if you do not offer journal publications. Therefore, even if in your field conference are very um, well seen, you need to provide also high quality journal publications. Again, two per year as first or last author and then maybe one or two per year where you're not first or last author. That's something which is typically sufficient. In terms of the uptake of your publications, this is something which is typically measured with age index or the number of citations that you get. Um, you may argue if those are the right measures, but this is something that people typically use, quite often using Google Scholar, for example. Uh, depending on your discipline or on your field, you should have an age index of, let's say, 10 to 15 as the minimum. Um, if you have less than that, people may argue against you. Um, if you have more than that, that's better. Um, 
also in terms of the number, overall number of citations that your papers have generated if you are something in the order of, let's say, 500, you're typically on the safe side, depending on your disciplines, could even be a little bit less. And the second th important thing is funding. So you need to show that you're able to attract third-party funding. In Germany, DFG funding um, counts quite substantially, but also funding that you receive from the European Commission. So if you, for example, can offer an ERC grant, this is very well seen, um, or if you, let's say, are the person in charge of an area, so research innovation action of the European Commission um, as the person who is listed in the Form A for your institution, this also counts. You are seen as a PI who can attract funding. Um, uh, what the university takes into account here may vary a little bit with GFD funding. You are typically on the safe side as well as with ERC grants um, and typically those proposals should bring in at least 200k for your lab. Um, if you have one of those projects that's good, two is better, but this also depends um, what's the time after you graduated with your PhD degree till the time of uh, the application. So if these are, let's say, um, three years in there, one project is fine. If it's, let's say, a six-year time span, you may want to go towards two. Um, the second important criteria was the fit to the position or to the call. And um, this is also an important thing um, because what the university wants from you, you, they want you to be successful for a certain position. So typically the faculty members um, which are currently at the university have decided on a certain profile or a certain competency that they need, for example, to conduct larger scale research projects um, or because they think that's um, a topic that is relevant for them and they don't have right now. Um, so they are interested in getting a fit for a specific topic. Sometimes those calls are very open, then universities are more interested in getting the top-notch person and are willing to kind of open the scope a bit more, but this is something that you can typically see from the call if you read the call carefully. Um, you also need to be able to show that you are willing to integrate in that place. That means that you look for uh, doing collaboration with other people, that you can show that you're willing to, let's say, try to attract larger scale DFG funding with your local colleagues. So can you integrate and bring the faculty members forward. So it's always important that you can show that you provide a benefit, something they don't have, something new, um, something that will bring the university, the faculty, the institute um, forward. That's very important. And people need to have the feeling that they can actually collaborate with you. The third part is teaching. Um, in my experience, often this um, teaching part has a somewhat lower weight and it's more a binary decision. So is someone, can someone teach or uh, is someone not well suited for uh, providing teaching to the students? Teaching itself is important because it allows us to form the next generation of researchers. So if we fail at teaching, um, we will struggle in the long run. Um, and in order to show that you're able to teach, some university will ask you to give a test lecture, um, others don't do that, um, but then you need to provide proofs that you can teach. How is this done? This can be done, for example, by showing that you have taught a lecture on your own at some point in time in the past. In the ideal case, it's a lecture that you also have designed on your own and you can show that you can teach. You have whatever, taught for 15 weeks, um, two to four hours per week, a course on your own. If you can do this, if you have done this, this is typically something that people say, okay, this person is most likely um, uh, cap capable of teaching. And um, what you can do, what I did, for example, which helped me uh, in my applications, I actually recorded my lectures as videos and shared them on YouTube. So um, the members of the commission could even check out those videos and see if they like the style uh, and the way I'm teaching. Um, so especially if you're confident that your teaching is good, I can really encourage you to do this because it adds an additional um, information for the commission members that they see that you're able to teach, something I can really recommend you doing. And that's more or less it. So you have those three criteria that you need to, has, let's say, these minimum requirements so that people regard you as appointable. Um, but of course, if you have 
other people in the game which have a much stronger publicational record, those persons are most likely to um, be higher up on that list. So the numbers that I've provided are seen like, or I see as a baseline, as minimum requirements for you being appointable for a professor position um, if you apply for the first time. If you are more senior and had a professor position already, um, you may raise those numbers obviously um, up because you already had a group, you already had independence and could show that you are able to lead and to bring things forward. It's also important to note, especially if you're a young researcher, that you need to plan those things in advance. So you can't write your CV and fulfill all those things if you haven't planned for that. So it's important that if you know you want to become a professor, a few years um, before you actually apply, you need to um, work towards meeting those criteria. Selecting proper journals um, that you can publish your research in. Writing grant proposals is probably something which takes the longest amount of time. The review for a project typically takes between, let's say, 6 and 12 months. Then it takes a while until the project starts. So if you actually want to show results from your research projects, this already takes quite some time. And writing the proposal, maybe getting rejected the first or even the second time, is something that can happen and happens regularly. Um, so you need to plan a certain amount of time in order to get the track record that you need in order to be appointable. So plan the things early enough so that you can successfully head towards a professor position. Um, it's a great place to be. I really enjoyed a lot being here as a professor, having my own research lab, doing my own research, defining what I want to do um, and work with young and highly motivated people. So something I can absolutely recommend and I hope this video helps you on the path towards that um, career. Um, what I have presented here is my own view and my perceptions of what I have seen. So I have been in, let's say, around 20 um, committees so far, appointing professors mainly in Germany, but also in um, three or four countries um, around Germany in Europe. Um, so this may be a slightly biased view within the European system, but I think it actually generalizes quite well also to other countries. I hope that was useful and good luck with your career choice. Thank you.